Hello, I'm Robert. And I'm Evelyn. And this is Token About It. And this is part three of our uh, three-in-one movie release. Though you might notice part two is missing. That is because when we were trying to find the animated Return of the King, it is not available digitally anywhere. No, it's not. It's not streaming. It's not for buying or for renting. So what we had to do is because we only own the VHS version and we have no idea where our VHS tapes are even or and we don't even have a player so even if we wanted to so we ordered the DVD and unfortunately it did not come in in time for us to watch and record it but, just came in about two hours ago right and we needed to get this recorded so I can get everything edited and out so we'll record it so we'll record it at some point this week and then we'll just release it once it's done um that being said this is going to be the russian version of the lord of the rings i'm not going to try to pronounce it correctly in russian but it's translated to guardians of the ring is um well, what it that, means that's interesting because they kept calling them keepers in the movie yeah, they kept calling them keepers instead of guardians. Or and, even fellowship. They never used the word fellowship. They did once, oh, actually. Okay. I, I made a note of that because it... Yeah. But anyway. So, the Russian Lord of the Rings, guys. What a train wreck. It was a beautiful train wreck. it was a wreck. beautiful train wreck. So, for some background information. This is a made-for-TV kids... I'll say film, I guess. It's in two, it was in two um hour and a half parts. And the worst green screen work I've ever seen. Well, I wouldn't call it the worst green screen work. It really read to me someone who had a green screen for the first time and really wanted to use it. <laughs> but anyway, so Someone Oak was over enthusiastic. It was a pantomime. It was, but we'll get into there. Um, anyway, so this was, uh, like I said, made for TV, made for kids, and it was made for Soviet television, and it was based on the Fellowship of the Ring, is what it says at the very beginning. It's not even, it, this is an adaptation of Lord of the Rings. It's a fantasy based on Lord of the Rings, which we'll get into in a second. But um, the narrator. There was a narrator who half the time when they zoomed into him, all you saw him was take a, a puff life. on his pipe and look into the camera like he's trying to look into your soul. Like they were trying to emphasize something. Right. Um, but... Again, this was uh, Soviet-made, and there were definitely um, propaganda that was thrown in with some rewrites and some things that they've said, which, again, we'll get into. But it, like I said, it was made in 1991 and broadcast only once and then completely lost because this was literally right before the fall of the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. This was truly right before it and so it, it was considered lost and it was only rediscovered in 2021 by a different television company that basically like bought everything from this previous one and they found it um and then it was released free onto youtube um it's not free well it has youtube commercials oh. which yeah but anyway that's just that was the only way to, for us to watch it, so that's what we had to do. Um, but, yeah, it was released onto YouTube, and then the only thing that we were concerned about is it was translated by someone that does speak both Russian and English, but they're not a professional translator. And so one of the things that we wanted to do is I have a friend that is fluent in Russian, and um, her, her family is Russian, and we reached out to her um, for her to also watch the movie about the translation. But because we ended up watching it um before she did, we told her that it's like the tr we feel we felt the translation was pretty good, and we didn't want to subject her to the movie if she didn't want to watch it. Yeah, and we, she said thank you. Yeah, we we felt two of us being punished was enough. <laughs> yeah, I because it was basically.
basically she owes me a favor and I'm like, hey, I'll cash in that favor for this. And I'm like, girl, I'm going to end up owing you more favors if you watch it. <laughs> um, But from what we saw, we were comfortable with the translation that we got um, without having like anything extra. We know it's not perfect, but between the... I guess I'll call it acting, and the, and the, and the translation. We got a pretty good sense of things. Right. So, um, and I don't think we're going to necessarily talk about it in linear order because I want to talk about something. No, we don't have to talk about it in linear order. I I took some notes, like I did the last one, but. You know the meme where it's the guy that's just kind of staring and then he just blinks and he's just like, what, what is happening here? That was me this entire movie. Like, d- like dad was just reclining, like, just like w- eyes wide, like, what is happening? And I'm on the edge of my seat, ha- um, hands, like, head on my hands, just enthralled by it because it was so fascinating to me. <laughs> So, the weirdest way. so for me, the good news. Yes, we got, but, they were, no, no, yes, no, no, no. okay. We got Tom Bombadil. Mm-hmm. The bad news is we got Tom Bombadil. He, they, they made him a giant. What? So. I mean, his head was as tall as they, the hobbits were. Oh, and the hobbits' height changed throughout the whole thing. Yeah, the Hobbit's height changed throughout the whole thing, but the only size difference was with Tom Bombadil. And I think that was just to make Tom Bombadil, like, more magical. So they call him a giant, not yeah, he, to, I, to, I guess, give a name to what he is. Yeah, and but what was interesting is, so in the book, Tom Bombadil, when, as the Hobbits see him... Uh-huh. He's a little taller than a hobbit, but not quite as tall as a man. Right. And so, but it was just, and and we knew it was Tom Bombadil right away because he had his yellow hat on. Yes. Actually, like, had, he took the hat off, like, pretty much right away. But he had the hat on, and it was the whole scene with the old man Willow. But I just think it's so funny because we got Tom Bombadil. We got, we kind, we ish got Maggot in a weird way that we will also discuss. And then we got um, the the Borrow Right. So, so, so we, We so it's, so, which again, we'll talk about. But I think it's so funny that. This is the adaptation that we got the things that we were missing that we kind of wanted. So what's interesting also is we do get one song. And it's Tom Bombadil singing to Old Man Willow. So we let him go. Let, let them go. Let them go. Some song. A couple other songs. That's, but not real. that's, that's the only that's real song. That's the only real song. That being said, that the the like the the theme song, I guess is what it is. That, like, honestly, that's not bad. Like, that's actually kind of a bop. Okay. Like, just like that kind of, like, ballad of, (laughs) of, like, what the background of the ring. And it it does not fit the tone of the rest of the movie. The movie, like I said, it comes off as a children's pantomime down to the costumes and the overdone makeup and the the sets and slash green screen work it definitely came off as that so it 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 felt very somber and more serious than the rest of the movie so uh so the movie starts (laughs) with that song with that song and then we get straight into the party underneath the big tree yeah there are six whole hobbits there Besides Bilbo showing up, even Frodo's not at the party. There's, no, Frodo there's, is not at the party. Sure, not yet, not yet. Um, yeah, Frodo's not at the party. Uh, oh, but there's. I wanted to mention the propaganda starts right away though with Bilbo at the party, because as the narrator is introducing them, he says that 
Bilbo is long lived even for a hobbit and that he's going to be 111 years old. And the narrator is like, that's right, 111, because he lives without greed and something else. But it, it was definitely it was definitely like some like a, a kid's message yeah. with like a communist kind of tinge yep. to it. Yep. Um and I thought that was really interesting that it's like it wasn't the ring that was long lived. It was because of his his lifestyle. And later we actually when the Saxville Baggins is, we get the fucking Saxville Bagginses in this one too. And they are quoted to look old, like twice as old as they actually are because they're full of greed. Yeah. And then what's and uh but my absolute favorite part of the whole thing are the fireworks. Oh my god, that was amazing. Oh, so they superimpose two really bad drawings of fireworks going off. Like like over, Yeah, like yeah, they're they're like over red material. Yeah. And it was just weird. Well, and yeah. Yeah, it was over material, but it was also over some of the party goers too. Yeah. Their faces and stuff. Yeah. And they go, ooh, ah. But yeah, so we've got I I made a note that it's like all the hobbits have like they're very old with mutton chops. Not all of them. Most of them are pretty Sam. And Fred, Fred is like the only one without mutton chops. The rest of them have mutton chops. No. Does Sam not have Sam no, too. Sam has it. Yeah. But there was, um, but Pippin didn't. Oh, you're right. He just had those really weird eyebrows. Oh, my God. Um. So, picture this. Picture this. Picture the actor who plays Mr. Bean. Give him some really crappy uh, punk hair. That's yellow. Like a, it's like an apricot -y color. Yeah, yellowish apricot. And makes... that's what he looks like. No, that's Frodo. That, oh, that was Frodo. I meant Frodo. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, yeah, yeah, that's Frodo. And and Frodo looks much younger than the rest of them. But Frodo, oh my god, they portray Frodo as, as that trope of the pantomime reluctant hero who's just he's very nervous all the time and he just he doesn't want to do it um but he must and he's he's very over excitable and like um and he's a drunken fool as well which is just interesting so well yeah i mean it's a merry life he's he's living a merry life yeah i That's guess part of the propaganda. but also so, and they're all identified easily with the color that they're wearing. And I, I didn't take notes, so I can't No, yeah. Them. Well, they all wore the same outfit throughout the entire time, which I guess was helpful. Yeah. But, uh, but for, and but, I was just going to mention Gandalf's look real fast, too. Okay, yeah. Gandalf was in a terrible wig with bangs and, like, this random no, French mustache. So, it's like they put a wig on top of his real long hair. When, no, that was that was. Um, no, it was him too. The other one was just so bad yeah, because they were different colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say, yeah, like all the wigs. It's not. It's, they didn't even try to hide the hair under the like under them, like and and literally there was this one part where Deagle. It was I wrote it down. It was Deagle. The guy's Deagle was literally wearing like a wig as a hat. <laughs> like like there's no other explanation because his hair was like past his shoulders and then he had this short wig like it was dark brown and then he had this like like blonde wig and dad and i are like is that a wig that's a wig like that that's that, that I, was our entire like i bet he was bald headed and that's why they did it <laughs> hat. like it just looked like he was using a wig as a hat but anyway so and then so oh we, but, we have a lot of like random euro pop moments as well well but hold on that's so I know we weren't going to go linear, but I don't want to miss this either. Okay. So, we get Gondolf. Gondolf is the same height as the hobbits. Yes. Um, he is a he's a lot more mean. Yeah. With Bilbo about giving up the ring and 
Right. And so for like that, and Bilbo even throws the ring into the fire. Yeah. Because he doesn't want it anymore. Right. And but that's you know, and that's how they end up being able to see the writing on the inside. Mm-hmm. Um, Which was very interesting because it looks like they were trying. They, to me, it looked like they were using the Latin alphabet, but with a Russian word, and I felt that was interesting yeah. the way that they chose to do that um versus the russian alphabet um but yeah i i i joke that euro pop cures bilbo of the rings influence because you just get this random euro pop moment and then bilbo's fine we all but, but we also we also get the origin of Gollum. oh my god early best, on early on too best Gollum, no no it's the only time we see Gollum in the in the whole thing by the way well, I'm, yeah, I'm sure he was supposed to be in there more, but because there was only two episodes of what was supposed to have been 12, I think. Probably. So it was a two-part of just the first book. So... I, we didn't even get to the first book. Yeah, it, it ends. It, it They they skip a ton. We'll get there. Because they, 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 they skip a lot at the end. But we liked sound effects. I did write down that the, the sound <laughs> effects were on point. They were 1970s... Um, uh, electric organ type thing. Um, it's like somebody discovered a keyboard where they can make sound weird sounds. With right. It. it was like, oh, wah, 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 wah. yeah. But, but, guys, Gollum. I I don't even know how to ex- how to ex- like Gollum. So the one thing we get of Gollum, he doesn't even do the Gollum. Even though they say that's what they do, do like even the narrator goes gloom, but, the, uh, but he goes um. Totally is ours. He's just. And and we get and we also we also get to see him basically murder the person he's with who found the who found, found the, the ring. ring. Like I mean, we basically see him get beat with a stone by yeah by, uh, he he by yeah he he. Smeagol throws Deagle out of frame and then like Mimes hitting him with like a branch and then throws a huge stone at him. Yeah. But oh, but the underwater stuff. Oh my god. With him with the other guy, I can't remember his name now. Um swimming down, he sees the ring, he swims down to get it, and it just that's honestly probably the most expensive shot of that film. <laughs> but, oh, and then at this point, with, um, so, like, Gandalf is, like, back, like, so Gandalf is, like, talking to Frodo and everything, and he says, winter is coming. And they say that multiple times, and I just could not stop laughing about that. Just, like, winter is coming. And they're like, it's always summer in the Shire, but winter on the road. Um... And then that's when we see the Dark Riders, where they only had three guys on in black on horses, and they would <laughs> show them riding in three different sets to make it seem like all nine, which, again, perfect, no notes. Um, and they had, like, again, they had, like, they had, like, 1980s Eurotech, like, techno music. Yes. For the Dark Riders. Um... But anyway, then we get to Maggot. All right, so we were really confused. We thought they just going to skip everything, well, and they end up in this tavern. And we and they were calling it Maggot's Inn, and so we're like, are they just not calling it Bree? Are they calling it Maggot's Inn? Right, and but then and then, later, but and but then you realize Maggot. Owns an inn, yeah. Tavern, not just. I mean, it's not. Yeah, it's yeah, nothing it's, like a regular book. Yeah, and and then really the only reason for that is, um, Maggot, um, like makes a note that it's like, um, there were these like really creepy dark writers like asking about Frodo, <laughs> and he's like, um, he was offered gold for treason, but would never take it. And it was a very solemn moment with everyone kind of nodding. And so that was another bit of kind of overhanded. It felt like propaganda. Yeah. Very overhanded there. Um, and so. Well, no. Go ahead. 
Real fast. So this is the part where, so they have been on the journey now for like half of what we've watched. And this is when Frodo tells them, you shouldn't go on the journey with me. You don't have to come because it's too dangerous. That's, this is when they start talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, a, well, but you know what? That's actually kind of where he does do it. He does it between being at Maggots and I'm before right. they get to the bridge. I know. It was still just. I, it was just. It was bizarre. It was just, oh my gosh. And they were telling Frodo, it's like, we're not following you blindly. We're following you because it's the right thing to do kind of thing. Um, And that's when. We have the old forest with Tom Bombadil. Did you want to talk a little bit about that real fast? Because well, this is when we realized. Yeah. Okay. So, so up until this point, we have basically seen the hobbits only knee up. Right. A up to this point. Like a few like wide shots of them walking. Yeah. But not real. But not a lot. So when you. So, so when. I think it's Pippin who gets caught by the tree. Thanks. So. Yeah. yeah. Pippin got by a tree. And at first, I'm like, look at that. They didn't even make the limbs the same color because it had these th these things hanging out of the hole and yeah. flapping and flapping. And then the, the translation called them paws. So I'm like, is this an animal trying to grab someone? And then they, they they're, as they're pulling... No, like, right before... Yeah. yeah. No, then we... So then we get a good shot of what it is, and it's... And we see the other people as well. The other people as well, and they're basically wearing cloth... Fur, like... Cloth feet with, with I mean, like, socket. I mean, it's almost like flesh-colored <laughs> socks that they sewed, have some hair onto it, and sewed... Um, Triangle toes that were like, long as yeah. like that looked like something out of where the wild things are. Right. And and but what was so funny is they didn't bother to stuff them, so they stick up. Yeah. They were flapping. So they so they're flapping around. <laughs> On goes. Wait a second. I think those are feet. And I'm like, what? And like I yeah. I like lean in closer. I'm like, oh my god, those are feet. And we're just we look at each other and we just we had to laugh because was, I. I uh, because we just thought it was part of the limbs of the tree. Yeah. It was just... <laughs> oh, my God. It was... Oh, wow. Um, um, then they had to breathe. Then they get to breathe, yeah. Then they get to breathe. And then... Um, they have the weird hand-washing scene with Goldberry as well, real fast. Oh, that's right, because they stayed overnight. But Goldberry... But she, she 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 insisted that they wash their hands before um before they eat and it was just really weird the way they did it which i guess was like part of the kids thing well be, well also remember you know you know the four of them take a bath before they eat at mm -hmm. the assistance of goldberg true and, and remember she is like a she's like a river sprite or Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. So. Oh, another thing that we forgot about Tom Bombadil that I wrote down. Um, I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. I just there's just so much to talk about with this stupid movie. Um, Tom Bombadil says to Frodo, "Fearlessness and love is more powerful than the ring." Yeah. Mm hmm. So, so we get, so we, so we get to Brie. Oh, we also had the bar white. You wanted to mention that. Well, that was, but that was, that but, was after. No, it was before Brie because Tom Bombadil saves them. That's what it's in my notes. Oh, that's, okay. So <laughs> the barrel right, the barrel right looks like the, well, the, the, yeah, no, no, not even so just, I mean, it old time clown music. Painted up like a Punch and Judy clown. And and just and had this hairnet on that was translucent so you can see that the guy wasn't really bald because you can see all the mushed up hair underneath the translucent head thing. 
Mm -hmm. the, the socket or whatever, the, the sock or whatever they put over his head. It was filmed completely sideways, too. Oh, and, 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 and she, <laughs> the cackle. Oh, my God, the cackle. I can't even, re, I can't even recreate it. Yeah. It, it was just, what in the world is that? Mm -hmm. And then, like, like Evelyn said, the, um, so yeah, so Tom Bombadil does rescue them. And there's all this gold and these yeah. weapons and everything. Yeah, I wrote that down too. And somebody, I don't remember which one, talks. We take. I still don't know which one it was supposed to be which. I just was able to figure out Mary at the end of the others. I still I couldn't tell who Sam or Pippin was. Supposed, which one was which? So, <laughs> um, so then they, uh, Tom Bombadil says, "Just take a blade for each one of you." But the treasures must be left. Yeah, but the treasures must be left. Yeah. Um. Then they get to the prancing pony. Then they get to the prancing pony, which is never called the prancing pony. Yeah, it's just an, it's just they're, they're just in another town and in another tavern, and Frodo wants to party. For like, some reason, yeah, for some reason Frodo wants to party. Yeah, the others are just like, no, you should go to bed. You should get a low profile, and so he chugs some beer and there's this like woman like a, this woman who's like totally awkward singing like opera-ish like a a, a a folk song but like with an opera a, a, a sound and he just like terribly is singing along with her and like forcing her to dance and the like, poor lady just looks so awkward yeah. like <laughs> thing but then he's just like something's wrong and then just puts on the like, like no other, like no reason for it. He's just he's drunk, and then all of a sudden he goes something's wrong, and then right, yeah, and um, but um, yeah, I mean he tries to use the name Mister Underhill, but when believe nobody believes. Just, no, we know who you are. And he does, and he does get the letter. Yeah, left for him by Gandalf. Strider, oh my god. Go ahead. You you took the, the, the letter first. I don't it was huge. It, yes. It's huge oh. Yeah, it was it, it was like it took like two of them to hold. Yeah, it's like what the town choir would open up in the middle of the square to read pronouncements from the king or something. Hey. I also this was when I made the note about the women in the random Renaissance dresses. Yes. They they just raided a theater department, guys. Uh, I I I think they just showed up at a Ren fair. <laughs> Maybe. Um. So that was awful. Uh, but then, yeah. And then we then we get to um with Strider. With Strider. But was with the letter. Because he Strider's like this unnamed person for the for like most of these, but it's just like I'm Strider. I will help. <laughs> it's just weird. And then. Which he, by the way, he has an open, huge cut on his cheek the entire movie, by the way. Yes. Uh, just a giant cut over his cheek. But anyway, so they, um, the, the, during, in the letter, Gandalf is like, oh, by the way, this random guy Strider's gonna help you. His real name is Aragorn, and he's the real king. And, like, just goes, like, yeah. just, like, says, <laughs> It, the letter just like details all of it, and then it even and he's already so. And then they talk about like the broken sword and the which whole. Which he already has. Yes. He's got. He's already got the. He's already got the broken broken sword that's been mended back together. And they're just like, well, if you're really Strider, prove who you are. After they just read the letter out loud, and he like shows them the sword, and it's like, hi, I'm Aragorn, and it's like, all right, cool. <laughs> Um, it was awful. And then, oh, and he had like this beat up jacket, but part of his proving his things, he takes off this beat up jacket and he's in like princely apparel. Underneath his Um, but yeah, they, they head, they, they head out. And they get to Weathertop. Well, yeah, they get to Weathertop and Frodo is stabbed. And honestly, the song is just, the song is playing again, and it just, it doesn't fit the mood of the rest of the movie, but I love the song. Right. And so, I, something we didn't talk about, really, um, was what Gondolf was wearing. 
Gandalf is not wearing gray. Right. We cannot. It looked. It, it, it looked. Like it looked like a brown. It looked like a purplish brown, crew like a like a night shirt, but it had the image of a wolf on the front of it. It's like what the heck is that? Yeah. And and then um. And then so he takes off. You know. But yeah, so they're in Rivendell. They're just like, yeah, you're fine. You're in Rivendell. Well, oh, wait, but the the way um, and the way that uh, uh, Frodo gets stabbed is just really weird too. Yeah. Um, just how that plays out and all. Uh, but then yeah, so they. Well, yeah, so, they, they, so they get to Rivendell. There's definitely some moments where they're at Rivendell, like he wakes up in Rivendell. And there's some pretty heavy-handed, like, you must endure the hard times kind of thing. Because, like, I re- and then I remember, like, at the beginning, like, when they were talking about the hobbits, is, like, the hobbits are, what make them so happy is that they they celebrate the good times, but they also understand that there's bad times and they go like they'll just toughen out through the bad times and it never wavers their spirit kind of thing so definitely some light propaganda there okay so now i want to i I want to introduce the other characters now yes this is when we get the council of uh elrond yeah so first of all elrond is dressed up in like prince princely attire Mm -hmm. Um, he's it's a got, full wind fair at this point. Yeah, and he's got two winches, you know, like mm-hmm. like like the servers, like the female servers at um the, the Middle Ages. Oh, at um, uh, medieval times. Medieval times. Yeah. Um. Uh, so you know, on each side of him. So we are introduced to Gimli. Gimli is not any Gimli is wearing this bright red coat I don't forget. Uh, and a red hat and he and, and the only reason why we know he's a dwarf is because he's the only one that has a beard yeah that yeah and they 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 pan to him when they say um gimli the dwarf but he, guys no one ever suspects the spanish inquisition <laughs> he looks exactly like he was out of the monty python sketch the no, 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 because he doesn't have the big hat. He just had, a, like, a skull hat. True. But still, like, it was that terrible fabric. Like, it was, like, it was, the, it was, the, it was, like, the terrible costume fabric. Not even, like, it was, but, yeah. it was, and literally, the like, of course, Dad and I made those jokes, like, for, like, the full day after watching. Because we had to take a, a couple days to process before we actually recorded. Right. And so, and then, <laughs> and then Bo- Boromir... Um, is this random old dude? No, he's not even old. He's just, you know, he's obviously, you know, a, a human that thinks everybody else is below him. Yeah, he's like this pompous, like, yeah. dude in his 50s with, I like, re- gray I hair. Really wanted, I really want to hear no one just walks into Mordor in Russian so I can know how to say that. But that, that they, yeah, that they, never they, came up. I didn't go there. Yeah, and that was that was when I noted it was the only time that um it was the only time that they mentioned the word fellowship was during the council where Frodo kind of says something along the lines of it's like this this fellowship is risking much or something. Yes. Um but yeah, so during this time we also see like Gandalf um oh, but, talks about but Saruman. At the, but at- yeah, but at the table, mm-hmm. at the table doing the planning, the other three halflings are already there. Yeah, doing as part of the nine already. Yeah. So it's not like they were caught listening. Like yeah, they're they, just invited, and we get a and we get like a brief like we get we're getting some like brief flashes of Legolas, and and I and at one time like is that a girl? And but you can't really tell until later. Spoiler alert. Um, yeah, it is played by a Legolas is played by a woman. 
who she looks looks like she's wearing like a fancy sweater and like legging and yoga pants and the way she is acting is like she was random is like one of those like audience participants um because she doesn't speak at all um they're and, constantly and they keep her in the back they keep, yeah they keep her in the back where if it's a close-up she's like face palming or weeping or whatever to try to hide the fact that it's a woman but it was actually it, it is it was the director's daughter i believe yeah is what i read somewhere um yeah the yeah it the <laughs> the um yeah it was it was his daughter played well, and we thought and we thought that was weird to start with but then i'm gonna i'm, I'm just gonna give you a brief fast forward real fast mm -hmm. so when they get to the woods and they meet Gladriel, yeah. all of those, all of those elves are played by women too. Yeah. Um, and it's just weird. It was just, just weird. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so, but yeah, so anyway, Gandalf talks about Saruman and that whole thing was also weird. So, yes, he goes, he, he talks about you know the the mass. You know the the leader of the wizards, um, mm -hmm. Saruman the White. And he calls the White several times. And what color is he wearing when they arrive? Red. Red. Red and brown. And evil, but, <laughs> but it's but it's interesting because they use red two different ways in this. Mm -hmm. They use it as a traditional evil color. Yeah. But because red is the major color in a Soviet flag, we also get red doing positive things. Or, yeah. Or in the, red something in the background when something is happening right, mm -hmm. or when justice is being taken care mm -hmm. of, and, and so forth. And it was just really flipping weird. I was I was looking to, I, I was looking to see if there was a cameo of somebody, of somebody holding a hammer and a sickle in each one of their hands. <laughs> To tell you the truth, but it was oh, and they also already have their horses. Yeah, they yeah. They already had their ponies even before they got to maggots. Yeah, they yeah they just had horses. Um, this is also during the flashback with Sarmine. I made this note, and I will read it verbatim. Are these baby Viking barbarians supposed to be orcs? <laughs> they they made. The orcs extremely tiny, and they called them orcs, but they made them very tiny green screen add-ons. Right. Yeah. And, and they looked and the, like they looked like Boromir did in the Return of the King, or sorry, in the um, Lord of the Rings animation, where he was like this Viking barbarian mashup thing, and that's exactly what they looked like. But but, but it was interesting though because before we actually saw. The orcs coming to attack. Mm -hmm. They give us this brief, like flash of lightning look at something that is incredibly coolly made. It just, it's like it's like somebody is wearing like a dinosaur head, like a, like a raptor head, as yeah. a helmet and all. And that's the land. I mean, you never see that again. You never see it again. Yeah. So it was just so flipping weird. And then I also wrote real fast that um the eagle graphic was perfect no notes. Where it was basically it looked like a it was basically an eagle a, it wasn't no sorry it was a falcon puppet. It was not an eagle. It was a falcon puppet that they used as an eagle where they had it like in the front and like the actor playing Gandalf was like well in the back to make him look like the same size that he was riding him. Just and it just like and the eagle just it just happened. Yeah and then it was, Yeah. Yeah. Then and then that. and then they're just in the cave. Oh yeah they the, leave and then they're just in the cave. Yeah then all yeah so all of a sudden they're in the mines of Mordia. Yeah. Mordia. But they never name it. They're just they're they just never, honored and journey. They, they never name it. Um, oh. Frodo gets grabbed by the creature in the water, and um, yeah, 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 Fro yeah. Fro Frodo and one of the other halflings, get, which we can't, we weren't able to tell yeah, who it was. They, yeah, and so they get away. So then they get inside, and they're trying to figure out where they are and where to go and where to go. So they had a map. 
And there was this whole thing about, like, we should just go home and Frodo's finally resolved, like, no, we need to go forward yep. kind of thing. And then... So we see so we see them hunched over looking at a map. Yeah. And then when they pan out, they're using Gimli uh, as the table. Because you see this flash of red and then I just scream, Gimli's the table. <laughs> Look at it. It's just like on all four. Like on all four. It's just you, it was wow. It it just it was so funny. And there was the and there was also the whole thing with knocking something down the well. Yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't just knocking something down the well. Pippin went down the well too. Yeah, and they kind of saved him. And they had to rescue him. Like what book is this? Right. So. And I also wrote Boromir looking into your soul because he just does a lot of like looking into the camera kind of bits when everyone else is being ridiculous, which I mean, honestly, same. But we never get to the Balrog. Right. No. Yeah. It's just them fighting orcs in a terrible green screen moment. And I wrote here, orcs are quacking Viking barbarians because they were quacking. Yeah. Kind of quacking. Ah! It's like what they were... So I will say there was like the green screen in the cave scene was actually hilarious because they had this like the green screen that looked like a terrifying ledge, but you could tell it was just like a nor like they were on a box or something. Yeah. But it was really funny. And then Gandalf just straight up missing. Yeah. yeah, like they're just like get out of it and they're like, where's Gandalf? I don't know. Well, we didn't make that part yet. <laughs> right. So yeah, so they just like <clears throat> so they're just missing and they're like, okay, let's keep going. And then suddenly, like as they're leaving, there's like this fog and these like Christmas angels with like 80s hair cuts, like the big 80s hair, start like, I guess, hypnotizing them and like drugging them. Yeah, I don't know what was going on. Sibby Lathlorian and props for the for the gold floor. They just had a they just literally just had a, a gold sheet as the floor right. for Lathlorian, which I mean I'm giving them props for, but they had like bells right. and were like hypnotizing them and, to and, like fall asleep. And Gladwell's mirror is a handheld mirror. Yeah. Though they keep though they say don't touch the water, which is hilarious. And there's this, I did write down, I don't remember, yeah, Galadriel says this, a dream is beautiful when it can be fulfilled. Uh -huh. So that was interesting. And she goes about um, black star versus white star. And yeah. Frodo's like, evil is inevitable. There's no, it is inevitable. There's nothing we can do about it. And Galadriel's like, nah. You can do it. Like, Frodo can be, like, evil can be defeated. And Frodo just, like, is just like, no, I can't. <laughs> and you're just, the faces are just ridiculous faces. And, oh, and the dancing elves. Jeez. Yeah, then there's the dancing elves. And then Galadriel passes a, like, 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 Frodo offers her the ring and, like, it just it gets real trippy again, and then she's like, "I passed the test," and they don't like say what the test is. Like they like like at no point during this entire thing did they say that the the ring like corrupts you or anything. Right. But none of that. And then like as soon as we had the Galadriel passes the test, like Frodo's chilling in an orchard in Lothlorien still. When the whole Boromir temptation thing starts, like they're in Lothlorien, and then the Boromir thing starts. Yeah. And so, like, Frodo is like suddenly like super serious and like runs away, and um, and it was really interesting because while Boromir was doing the whole thing like wanting the ring, he says, "Do I look like a traitor?" Which. I feel like had like some double meaning that we didn't understand with cultural context. Right. Um, but Frodo's like very serious and he runs away and then um uh Sam 
uh, rolls up and it's just like, I'll go with you. And Frodo's like, all right. And they just walk off. And that was the end. Thank God. <laughs> like, it was, it it happened. It Because that, if they had filmed the whole thing, that thing would have been 15 hours long. 12 episodes of an hour and a half. I've got a long slipping town. So that I mean it was that was that whole, twelve. That was that 12? I think it was twelve. Maybe it's just ten. No, because it was it was two it, it no, it would only be six. Because it it was two for each for the, it was the full Lord of the Rings. They just cut a lot. But they didn't really get to the end of the fellowship book, though. Yes, they did. Not really. Their interpretation of it, which is Boromir did the temptation thing, and Frodo and Sam went off on their own. Yeah. And we don't know what happened to Gandalf. No. They're just like, he's missing. Okay. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's Gandalf. Mm-hmm. What can you say? That's Gandalf. Right. I, I almost expected them to do that, you know, um... No, 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 the, 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 the full house with the little girl going, that's it, you know, with her hands uh, spread out. Yeah. You know. That's it. Where are you getting it was, it was definitely made for kids. Like, no, it was, it was definitely. It, it, was, it, was a, it was very low budget made for kids. That's what it somebody, was. Somebody had something on somebody, and that's why it was made. Well, the question, the big question that people have about it from when I was doing my reading on it is why it was made in the first place where they took a Western hero. But it's not really, but they don't see it as a Western hero. It's, it's, they see it as just fairy tale. Well, because they do have, like, because it's based off of the Russian translation of Lord of the Rings, which apparently it's a very important distinction that it was based off of this specific translation, though I wasn't able to find more about the translation. Well, it was probably, um, it, was trans, it was translated by some high muckety-muck in the Soviet government. No, it was by an actual... Literary translator. There's a high muckety muck in the Soviet government. Um, but yeah, it was it, it was definitely interesting. So, my recommendation: I want you need to make it a drinking game. I I, I want I want my time back. No, it was great. Don't pretend like you didn't enjoy it. I, I want my time back. It was a one-time thing. I'm not going to watch it again, but I'm glad I did, you know? I I, I despised it. It was fantastic. <laughs> I would have rather had hot needles shoved in my eyes than have to watch that thing. Oh, but we were talking about how you can definitely make it a drinking game because... um. Take a sip every time it um, pans to or from a flame or a candle. Because oh. at one time it pans hey. into a candle that's not even lit, but it can't. Like that was every transition was to a candle. Or it's supposed or to shine some... a candle and then widens or, out. Or it was somehow supposed to be conveying some information that we're just not. We don't. We're not familiar with the context. Yeah, maybe. I felt it was more of a, a choice, though. Well, it's a choice. It's a choice for a different reason. Or more of a cinematic choice to try to add something to it. Yeah. And it was, oh my gosh. I just... It was a lot. It's one reason why we didn't record right away. We needed to process. We need I needed to do research on it because we we did want to go in knowing nothing. All we knew is that it was. I made... still know nothing. <laughs> All we knew going in was that. Um. All we knew going in is that it was made 
in Russia during the time of the Soviet Union still in power. Right. And that, from what I had heard colloquially from other people, was that there was some propaganda in it. It was awful, folks. It was fantastic, folks. It was just... <laughs> it was worse than the movie Face Off. It was worse than movie... <laughs> On our worst list, because we feel like it doesn't it doesn't go with the other movies on our worst list. I know because it's not a, it's not a full movie. Yeah, it's not. I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't but, consider but, it. But it's, it's just and it's it's a low budget movie. My children, babe. It's not even that where because it's like I feel like the movies that are on our worst films list are movies that like try to be serious and were just really awful. First, or tried to be funny and were really awful versus this. Again, I do feel like it was a low budget, made for kids, and they knew that. Um, it made for TV, low budget, kids thing. And they and I feel like they knew that going like going in and doing the entire thing. So I don't think we can put it on our worst list because no, no. for what it for what it is, I think it's actually really good. You know, no, we can't put it on the worst list. Because it's the worst is. <laughs> I I feel like for what it is, they did a good job. I'm I'm gonna have to start questioning everything that you want us to watch or read for now on because No. This no. was just is terrible. As you guys were teasing me about me re-watching some old Disney Channel movies. I admit they're terrible. Yeah, no, no, no. They're terrible, and I hate them, but I love them for some reason. It wasn't just that they were terrible. It was terrible. It was beyond terrible. It was so far gone terrible. It was... I admit they're terrible. It was, no. I, just, I like them in their terribleness. I'm not talking about your... Comparing <laughs> these two episodes, or whatever it was supposed to be, to, to those descendant... Movies and all that other. The name of it, okay. That other crap that you watched on Disney, um, all the Halloween stuff on Disney. I love it. The Descendants, comparing that to the other, comparing that to the this Russian thing, the Descendants deserve an Oscar nomination. <laughs> That's how bad this was. And for what it, it it's again, it's one of those things where for 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 what it is, it's good. No, it's not. It's not. For so I liked they it. They could have they could have gave they could have gave a high school drama department ten thousand dollars and they would have done a much better job at this. Which one are we talking about here yeah, or both? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the, about the, the, the Russian version. The Russian version. It was, oh my gosh! I really wish it had. I really wish it had um, had actual close captioning. Yeah, I would like to hear the the uh, a, a more formal translation. I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would like to see. I would like to see close ca close caption of the actually what they're saying, not what they're. Translating into English mm -hmm. later on the literal translation of stuff. Yeah, it's hard when it comes to translation though, because like it, you gotta when it comes to professional translation, you gotta be able to like like. I can tell you right now, no professional translated this. <laughs> well, no, that's someone did it out of the kindness of their hearts, and I think that's great. Yeah. And I think they did a good job for not being a professional and providing it for free. It's like, um, when I, it's like when it's like the occasion when I have to go do, I have to do a deep dive in something in the Old Testament, and I have to have my Hebrew dictionary beside me, to, and then I'm just picking the words out. But well, because that's what I so again. That's why I let my Russian friend off the hook because. Um, she grew up in America. Um, she doesn't really have any cultural knowledge of what the Soviet Union was like. Her parents left before. But, um, but it and, could have 
I mean, before it toppled, but their, her parents came to America and like raised them away from that. But what I would like to do is I would like to hear from someone that has a little bit more cultural understanding of some of the of some of the themes and such that they were going off of and like what this was like in 1991 like what soviet russian culture was like and give us some more context as to what things were being said it was awful i give it five negative stars <laughs> uh, just Absolutely terrible. So, which was worse? This or the Lord of the Rings animated, keeping in mind about how they made their choices with Sam? This was still worse. This was worse? <laughs> True, yeah, because Sam wasn't any, wasn't really even named until the end. No, 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 we know he's Sam. But yeah, halfway through they call him Sam. No, 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 no. We know he's Sam because the he gets pulled out of the bush. Listening in. Does he? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. Oh. And remember I said remember I said that was disappointing how they did that because we got because by doing that they skipped the whole eavesdrop yeah. eavesdropping dialogues. No, that was in Lord of the Rings, not the Russian one. The Russian one, he's just there. It's not until the end that it's just like, oh, that one's Sam because he's the one we because Frodo calls him Sam. Right. Yeah. And he's got mutton chops. So they all have mutton chops. No, no, they don't. No, they don't. Except for Pippin. Holden and Pippin don't, and the other two do. So a lot of the hobbits do. So these hobbits are supposed to be younger than Frodo. Mm hmm Except for Pippin, they all look old. Way older. I mean, like the mutton chops, um, wearing glasses. <laughs> yeah, it just, oh, no, thank you. <laughs> I am so done with this. <laughs> Are you done? I think I'm done. Um, I watch at your own peril. But if you do watch it, we want to hear your thoughts. I'm disappointed, Robert. I'm enjoying it, Evelyn. And you've been listening to Token about it. <laughs>